Hello everybody, my name is Sohail Nazem and in this video I am going to talk about the man in the middle attack. Man in the middle is one of the most common attacks in the information technology. It is sometimes called hijacking attack. A man in the middle, or as I told you, hijacking attack, is a type of attack that involves a malicious element listening in on communications between parties and is a significant threat to organizations. Such attacks compromise the data being sent and received. As interceptors not only have access to information, they can also input their own data. Given the importance of the information that goes back and forth within an organization, man in the middle attacks represent a very real and potent threat that IT professionals need to be able to address. In this video, we will talk about three types of the man in the middle attack. One of them is session hijacking. In this type of man in the middle attack, an attacker hijacks a session between a trusted client and the network server. The attacking computer substitutes its IP address for the trusted client while the server continues the session, believing it is communicating with the client. For instance, the attack might unfold like this. A client connects to a server, the, attack, the attacker's computer gains control of the client, the attacker's computer disconnects the client from the server, the attacker's computer replaces the client's IP address with its own IP address and spoofs the client's sequence number. And number five, the attacker's computer continues dialogue with the server and the server believes it is still communicating with the client. The mitigation mechanism for the session hijacking can be encryption and use of a long number as the session key. Encryption of the data traffic passed between the parties by using SSL or TLS, in particular the session key. This technique is widely relied upon by web-based banks and other e-commerce services because it completely prevents sniffing style attacks. However, it could still be possible to perform some other kind of session hijacking. The second solution for the mitigation of uh, session hijacking is use of a long random number or string as the session key. This reduces the risk that an attacker could simply guess a valid session key through trial and error or brute force attacks. Okay. Let me show you one very simple simulation from the session hijacking. The client sends a request to the server with the user X and the password 1234. But one malicious attacker is here, the unauthorized person is here, and he gets all of this information. When the server is passing the session ID XYZ to the, to the client, Again, the, the unauthorized person can read this information. And after that, using the session ID, the attacker can continue its communication with the server. And in this way, server believes that it is communicating with the right client. Okay. For the next type of the man in the middle attack, we have the IPS spoofing. IPS spoofing is used by an attacker to convince a system that it is communicating with a known trusted entity and provide the attacker with access to the system. The attacker sends a packet with the IP source address of a known trusted host instead of its own IP source address to a target host. The target host might accept the packet and act upon it. Actually, the mitigation mechanism is very simple, is packet filtering. <clears throat> packet filtering because it is one defense against IP spoofing attacks. The gateway to a network usually performs ingress filtering, which is blocking of packets from outside the network with a source address inside the network. This prevents an outside attacker spoofing the address of an internal machine. Ideally, the gateway would also perform egress filtering on outgoing packets, which is blocking of packets from inside the network with a source address that is not inside. This prevents an attacker 
within the network performing filtering from launching IP spoofing attacks against external machines. It is also recommended to design a network protocols and services so that they do not rely on the source IP address for authentication. Another type of the man in the middle attack that maybe you have listened a lot about that is a replay attack. A replay attack occurs when an attacker intercepts and saves old messages and then tries to send them later, impersonating one of the participants. This type can be easily mitigated with session timestamps or nonce. The nonce is a random number or a string that changes with time. Okay. Now we have a little bit familiarity with the man in the middle attack and some sort of the mitigation mechanism that I provide for you. In general, the mitigation mechanism for the man in the middle attack it can be categorized in two subcategories authentication and tamper detection. Authentication provides some degree of certainty that, it, that a given message has come from a legitimate source. For the authentication, we have a lot of techniques, like some sort of a digital certificate and a lot of things that we will speak about them in the next chapters of this course. Another type is the tamper detection. Tamper detection is only shows the evidence that the message may have been altered. Again, I'll repeat for you, for the tamper detection, we will speak later in this course. Okay, I finished this video here. If you have any kind of question, you can drop me a message. And please subscribe us in the Vision Academy. And uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.